Okay, well, hopefully I'm going to get you to uh, do some thinking uh, in the next 10 minutes. I'm not normally used to speaking for such a short period of time, so uh, I will be using notes a bit, trying to restrict my uh, natural flow. Um, I run uh, uh, the Big Sheep over in Biddeford. Uh, I run a adventure park at Atlantic Village, uh, and uh, about just over 12 months ago, I took on a, a training company uh, where, called Purple Cloud Consultancy, and uh, uh, we, we're, I think we're probably now the biggest uh, customer service providers uh, for customer service training uh, in the UK at the moment um, with uh, partners. Um, but I also uh, have spent the last 10 years uh, looking at positive psychology and happiness as one of my key core values. Um, and so I came across a, a, a training company uh, that do a presentation called The Art of Being Brilliant. Uh, it was brought to me by the training director from uh, Ginsters, and uh, I've done a couple of conferences uh, with uh, Andy Cope and Andy Whitaker, who wrote this incredible book called The Art of Being Brilliant. And for those of you that read personal development books, uh, normally they're American, they're very cheesy, uh, and most of them are a bit sick providing, especially the positive stuff. If uh, you come across people like Anthony Robbins and Zig Ziglar, um, it really is uh, quite hard work, even though the messages are actually really good. Um, in life, you have an average of 27,000 days. Um, and uh, you have uh, a choice on how you want to, to live your life. The whole uh, concept I'm going to do now in the next 10 minutes is about positive psychology, which is the, the, uh, how you make yourself happy, or you can potentially make yourself happier. And, uh, and this is what the Art of Being Brilliant was all about. Um, it's not about changing people. It's about being yourself brilliantly. So just want you to think about the last time you were brilliant. The last time you were amazing. You had an incredible day. You were incredibly productive. And at the end of it, you thought, wow, that was amazing. Hopefully, you're not going back too far. <laughs> um, and now I want you to think of uh, six words that describe you brilliantly. When you are unstoppable, I know whenever I do Sudoku, and uh, it's normally the killer hour and a half at least, and, uh, and when I've done it, I go around the room, I'm invincible. <laughs> I just feel fantastic. Um, so some words about when you, when you, you brilliantly. Positive, passionate, confident, confident enthusiastic, enthusiastic, powerful, powerful creative, creative Persuasive. Savvy. Savvy. Valuable. Valuable. Okay. Normally, um, psychology, for those of you that I don't know if there's anyone that's ever studied psychology, um, is normally about studying sad people, sick people. Um, they, uh, they're people that are um, schizophrenics, manic depressives, um, psychotics people that are going to kill themselves or kill each other or kill someone else uh, unless they're rescued, helped. Um, they live very, very sad lives. Um, and psychology is, was basically all about that. And then in 1998, uh, Martin Segelman, uh, who is an American psychologist, he was the first happiness uh, person. He studied happiness. He wrote Authentic Happiness, uh, learned optimism. And uh, so he started this, this whole movement about positive psychology. Um, and Andy Cope is one of the, the British professors um, they call him a doc doctor of happiness, but basically um, he's done a lot of studying with uh, at Loughborough University, and he was trying to work out um, the things that make people happier um, and better. And uh, so he, he um, so if you're looking at zero being just about dead, and we're talking about the psychologists dealing below the line, all right, so they're dealing with uh, zero to minus 10, all right, we're now on the positive scale, zero to plus 10. We're, from zero, zero to, to, uh, to plus 10, um, most people in the UK are operating on about a three. Um, so we're, we're about three because we read the Daily Mail, we watch the news, uh, we complain about the weather, and uh, normally we're pretty sad and unhappy. There is, however, a group of people out there, uh, two, uh, roughly 2% of the population, that are about an eight or a nine. Um, so those are the ones that basically he was studying. And then there's a group down the bottom here, another 2%, that he calls the mood hoovers. Uh, some of you might be a mood hoover. Some of you might know a mood hoover. Uh, he describes them as basically people that uh, brighten up the room when they leave the room. Um, that, suck, <laughs> uh, uh, that suck all the air out of any meeting. 
and uh, um, pretty, they're pretty, pretty drastic lot. Um, but there are things uh, that we can do uh, to, to, to move up that ladder. Um, and one of the a couple of interesting... I'm just going to give you a couple of things to start thinking about. Imagine you're in a room like this, and from the ceiling, two million straws fall down, all right? And you have to grab some of those straws. Um, but you're only able to grab 134 straws. So the, bits, the straws that I grab are going to be different from the straws that you grab and the different from the straws that you grab. Um, your your um, senses are bombarded every second by two million sensory things. Sen the five senses, touch, taste, smell, sound, feel, he hearing. Sweet. You're hearing, yeah. Um, and, uh, but you're only able to consciously take in 134 of them. Um, and uh, so the, the, the key question is, of the two million things that are hitting you every second, what 134 straws are you holding? What 134 of the two million sensory things that hit you are you actually taking into your consciousness? And uh, I spend a lot of time trying to think about what makes me happy. Things like blue sky. Whenever I see blue sky, it makes me smile. Whenever I see the sm get the smell of the sea, it makes me happy. Whenever I have an amazing taste, I concentrate on my food and the, concentrate on the taste. Um, there's uh, a lot of people that can't help grabbing sad things. So what I want you to think about when you get home is the 134 things that you're concentrating on, are they happy or are they sad? And can you, you should be able to consciously decide which ones you grab. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people that uh, tend to live very sad lives, they keep grabbing the same straw again and again. And uh, often they'll replay things in their mind, um, often if they're going through a divorce or whatever, um, just the one incident gets played over and over again, and your mind can't close it off, and for you not to think that that same incident happened many, many times over. But it's the same thing with happiness. If you, if you can find happy things, um, then uh, you've played over and over, your mind thinks it's happened many, many times. So which, uh, which of those straws are, are, you, are you grabbing? Um, so it's just a, it's a, it's a question of, 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 uh, of what you're actually focusing on. Right, another uh, technique, which was uh, uh, Stephen McDermott, which is who, who, one of the international speakers, um, he uh, came home one day from uh, he's doing, he's doing his, uh, one of his talks, been driving the car for three hours, absolutely exhausted. And uh, he got through the door, and the kids were there, and they jumped on him uh, before he managed to get in the door. And he said, kids, kids, chill. I've been driving in the car, I'm really tired, just give me five minutes, put the, I'm going to put my bag down, I'm going to take my jacket off, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. Um, and his wife suddenly said to him, he said, Steve, remember, in a couple of years' time, your children won't mind whether you're home or not. And it had a massive impact on him. So he thought, right, next time he, he came home, he thought, right, I'm going, what would the best dad in the world do? So when I go home, if I was the best dad in the world, what would I do? And uh, so he thought about it. And then he, as he came in through the door, uh, he dived on the kids, grabbed his kids, gave them a big hug, big kiss, talked about, uh, asked them what they were doing, and got really, really excited about all the, all the toys and all the things they were doing. And after about four minutes, um, they got bored. <laughs> and uh, they, they wanted to go and do on the, on the PlayStation, the Xbox, and go back and watch the telly. Thought, this is fantastic. You know, I can be the best dad in the world, but I don't have to do it forever. I only have to do it for four minutes. And uh, so uh, the same thing applies to other things. So you don't, if you, if you uh, go into a situation, whether it's when you get home from work, whether you're going to work, whether you're in a meeting, um, if you are your brilliant best self for four minutes, um, the energy that it creates within you um, is absolutely massive. So what I want you to do also is when you're feeling a bit down, when you're not looking forward to, uh, maybe it's, it's not, obviously not a joined up event, but when, <laughs> when, when, you're, when you're going into a meeting or a thing that, uh, some, something you're not particularly happy about or you're feeling a bit down, uh, just, it's called the four minute rule. Just try and be your amazing best self for four minutes. And normally, because you, you create so much energy um, and the response that you get back from all these people around you is just so much more positive, um, you can start moving up, up, up this level. Um, 
Right, I know we're out of time, Tracy. So I'm just right. Just so, just to uh, to conclude, um, what are you focusing on in your life? And the things that you're focusing on are they making you happy or are they making you sad? And you have a personal choice. One of the key thing, findings that from the um, the psychology of happiness is it's about personal choice. You can decide to be happy, and uh, a lot of people um, just don't bother to make the effort. It's much easier to go with the flow. It's much easier to be caught in the cycle of negativity, um, complaining about the weather with everyone else, mumbling about the news, um, and uh, um, we tend to get sort of stuck watching, watching soap operas. If you watch soaps on the telly, they are depressive. No, no, no life could be that sad. <laughs> Sorry, they don't, you know, but they, they, that's how they operate. You know, they pull you into it. Because, you know, it's almost like car crash TV, and you're desperate to find out what other sad things happen with this relationship. Um, so what's, what, you know, what's, what straws are you grabbing? And also, next time you uh, go into a situation, whether it's with your kids, uh, whether it's with your wife, whether it's at work, um, the, the, this, this time of the year, it's quite draining for me. I, you know, it's just, we've had a really, really busy summer, you know, and yes, yesterday, day before, you know, I went in there, and I was, just had so many things going on, um, and uh, my staff said hello to me, and I just, I thought, Christ, that was terrible. You know, I hadn't really given them that, you know, well, you know, that big cheesy grin and, you know, how are you doing and, and, and the interaction. I just went into the office and hid behind the computer. Um, and uh, so I made a conscious decision today, you know, to, to say hello to them, to engage with them. And, you know, it is only a few minutes. They get pretty bored of me after about three minutes or four minutes. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, suddenly, you know, the, the response they're getting, and it G's them up for the rest of the day. So think about the four-minute rule. Think about what straws um, you're catching every day. Thank you.